G'day, I'm Paul, and I finally found a car with a similar name to me. It's the Kia Stonic, but if you want to be ethnically diverse, like where I'm from, you'd call it the Kia Stonich, because Marek, Marich. Anyway, this here is brand new, because it's a facelift, but it's also a new variant. It's called the Kia Stonic, Stonich GT line. It's priced at just under $30,000, and it competes with things like the Mazda CX-3, the Hyundai Venue, the Toyota Yaris Cross, and the Nissan Juke. It's a competitive segment, because they're all SUVs based off small cars. This one here is based off the Rio. Today we're going to do a detailed review of this car. If you do want to skip ahead to other parts of this review, you can use the time codes up on the screen there, or if you're on YouTube, just scroll down and use the chapters below. And if you haven't done so already, I'd love it if you could hit subscribe and press the bell icon so you can find out every single time we drive cars that have a similar name to me. Now, what do you reckon about the design? The GT line gets all of these trim highlights and the GT line body kit. The design's interesting because it feels like it's not quite as modern as a lot of Kia's newest cars. So things like the Sorento, the Carnival, they all have this really edgy look to them. This kind of feels like Kia of yesterday and it follows through to the interior as well. We'll get to that in a second. But look, it doesn't mean that it doesn't look good. I just think it doesn't look as sharp as some of Kia's newer cars. But you can see the design highlights here, like this black section, you've got some brushed aluminium there, and then the darker tones that mix in with the piano black. Now it's interesting here, this is pretty much all blocked off. There's like a couple of little holes there, but for the most part, the cooling is limited to these bottom sections. This is kind of just like a bit of a garnish. But if we hop over here, this is pretty cool for this segment. So full LED headlights with daytime running lights. And then that top section turns into an indicator as well, which I reckon is pretty cool. Jump around to the side. Down here, you've got 17 inch alloy wheels and it follows that design trend of the brushed chrome look on the outside and then the darker section inside. You have 55 profile tires and not quite as big as the CX-30, but wheel arch protectors here, despite the fact this is front wheel drive only. Now, this is interesting because Kia has done the ride and handling tune in Australia and generally with the GT line, cars, certainly with the Serato, they've been pretty firm. So I'll be interested to see with that much profile on the rubber, whether this is the same story. Okay, now let's move down the side of the car. More piano black up the top of that wing mirror with the indicator built in. I really like this two-tone look. We're seeing a lot of this on small cars these days. Really just breaks up the paint job and gives it a lot of definition as it approaches you. And then they break up the black section of the roof with these <laughs> roof racks here. We've got privacy glass and similar to the Carnival, that roof rack comes down the back and has a little section that sticks out, kind of makes it look like it's moving, which I think is cool. And then a chrome garnish down here. Come around to the rear of the car, more black along the top here. You can actually see part of the roof there is still in the red color, shark fin antenna too. No LED lights at the back here, they're incandescent. And then you get your Stonic badge there with GT line. Now let me know in the comment section below, what do you reckon about the design? Do you think it looks good? Do you think it looks good enough for the price? Let me know what you're thinking. Okay, so we are inside the Kia Stonic. Let's have a look at the key. Here it is here. You have lock, unlock, boot. And then on the back, you have the Kia logo. By the way, that's getting updated. There's a new Kia logo coming. Let me know what you think of it in the comments section below. It's a proximity sensing key, so you just leave that in your pocket, grab the door handle, and you push the little button on the door handle to unlock the car, and then you have push button start inside. Righto, what about styling? So styling-wise, I think it's nicely presented. There are a lot of dark tones on the top, down the bottom, but it is broken up with these silver sort of brushed aluminium highlights and this faux carbon fiber might be real, you never know, uh, but I don't think it is. But in terms of the actual materials themselves, there is a lot of hard stuff around here. So I don't know, like I mentioned earlier, this feels like a Kia of yesterday. It doesn't feel sort of high tech and advanced like the Sorento and the Carnival. I mean, they had the cool 3D LED elements inside the doors and all of the materials just felt really high end and premium. This kind of feels like they've just thrown it all together. Sorry about that as well. That's going to keep happening throughout our video. It's just a battery discharge warning. Now, what about your touch points? So that is soft-ish. And then you also have padding on the doors as well. How soft is it? Well, we have tested the surfaces with our gerometer. If you want to see how this car compares to other cars that we've tested before, scroll down and have a look in the description below. Now, what about build quality? So look, it's okay. It just feels a little bit, you know, 
wonky down the center here, but the rest feels pretty good. Okay, moving on to infotainment, you get an eight inch infotainment screen. If you do wanna see a detailed review of this, click up here to watch one that we recorded earlier. But today I'll just give you a brief run through. So this is your home screen. You can see up here, you can select different driver profiles and there's like a shaded overlay of the map plus the time. But you can scroll across to get the rest of your map menus. There is inbuilt satellite navigation. That's a pretty decent units it's nice and quick as well and easy to use you also have different features like inbuilt bluetooth connectivity for standard phone connections but there is no voice recognition when you press that button nothing happens unless you have smartphone mirroring paired you do have sounds of nature so they're the soothing inbuilt tunes to keep your children quiet and relaxed you also have the ability to play video through the screen via a usb device and also record voice memos in terms of audio you have am fm TAB Plus digital radio and a six speaker sound system. And then in terms of smartphone mirroring, you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. They're both wired, so you'll need a cable to access those. But I love this integration. It's really high resolution and very quick as well. I'll show you what that looks like with the maps too. There it is there, all nice and easy. And this is what Android Auto looks like. Really high resolution too, I like that. Uh, and that all looks good as well. Hey, by the way, if you want to see a comparison between Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, click up here. We recorded one. It gives you a bit of an insight into the differences between the two systems. Plus, we did some tests as well. There is also a screen ahead of the driver that displays your trip computer and a couple of the car's settings, along with a digital speedometer. Righto, let's talk safety. So you have autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist detection. Over here on the steering wheel, you have a lane departure warning and a lane keeping assistant. Kind of steers on its own to stay within lane doesn't really work that well it often tries to steer when you're still within your lane and it doesn't really deal well with construction zones either there is no radar cruise control or blind spot monitoring which is a little bit strange but you do get a driver attention monitor now you get rear parking sensors as well let's have a look at what the reverse view camera looks like there it is there. Look, the quality is not amazing, but you do get guidelines to help you with reversing. Moving on to practicality, and we'll kick off with connectivity. We'll get rid of this cable for the moment. You have one USB port up the front, and if you're using smartphone mirroring, that is going to be taken as soon as you plug that in, and one 12 volt outlet. There's no wireless phone charging, but let's see where you can actually put your phone. So your phone easily fits up on the top tray there. It's padded as well, along with the bottom tray. You can also fit it inside the cup holders if you want. Speaking of cup holders, coffee. I know someone told me in the comments to get a man-sized coffee, but it upsets my stomach, so I have this. Um, in terms of the cup itself, fits in perfectly. No dramas there. And then in terms of bottles, let's have a look at our water bottle. Fits in there, no dramas, but no teeth, so it moves around a little bit. And then inside the door, you have plenty of room for water bottle storage plus other odds and ends. Center console is pretty deep. So you can see how far down that goes. We'll see if that closes. It doesn't close, but it does slide forward, which is handy. And then you have a glove box, which is predominantly taken up by the manual there, but you can fit your water bottle in if you need to. And finally, you have a sunglasses holder up the top here. Okay, what about comfort? So these seats are interesting because they've got like this leather style stuff on the outside and the inside is this fabric, but it's got these cool lines throughout it with these reflective portions up the top. So it's a really nice design. In terms of actual seat comfort, it's a nice place to be seated. And then in terms of seat adjustment, it's all manual, but the steering wheel sits nicely in the hand. It's got a flat bottom as well and then a GT line badge on it. And all of these controls are easy to reach as well. Okay, second row. Uh, despite looking like an SUV, there isn't a massive amount of legroom here. This is, of course, based on the Rio platform, so there's only so much you can extract from that. That means my knees are sort of inside the seat there. Keep in mind that I do normally have my seat quite far back, so that explains part of that. There's barely any toe room and headroom is okay, but not amazing. There's no center armrest here and you get the same seat design as the front row. There's also no air vents back here either. You do get ISO fix points on the outboard seats, one map pocket and then a USB charging point down the bottom. You also have bottle storage inside the door as well if you need it. But outside of that, it is pretty cramped back here. Okay, let's talk cargo space. So uh, manual tailgate, there's a little button under there. You have a little over 350 litres available here and under the floor we have a space saver spare tyre plus the jack. 
little bit of storage off to the side as well. Let's see how it fits our bags. That one tucks in nicely there. We'll try to go a long ways first. Yep, but if we swivel it around, that fits in perfectly fine. Now I'll show you what the space looks like with the second row folded. I'm gonna get rid of this cargo blind. That comes out fairly easily. And then what you can do is drop the second row from here. Bang away it goes. And you have a little over 1100 litres of space. So not a flat floor, it steps up just over here and it is a fairly high boot lip, but it's a generous amount of space for, I guess, a tiny SUV like this. Okay, we have hit the road in the Kia Stonic. Now powering this GT line is a new engine to the Stonic range. So it is available with a naturally aspirated four cylinder petrol engine, but this one here is a one liter turbocharged three cylinder petrol engine, makes 74 kilowatts of power and 172 Newton meters of torque. And that's mated to a seven speed dual clutch transmission, which sends torque directly to the front wheels. Now, I do wanna point out one annoying thing with the Stonic. I just noticed that sometimes the throttle pedal was just incredibly numb. It just wasn't really doing anything. And I realized it was in eco mode. So I changed it into normal mode and I'll run through the drive modes a little later on. But the car defaults to eco mode each time you start it for some reason. It's absolutely bizarre and it's incredibly frustrating because it almost feels like it's not getting fuel in eco mode. That's how much it cuts that throttle response. And by the way, I did check the manual to see if you can actually remove eco as the default, but it doesn't look like you can. Right, so being a dual clutch, what does it all feel like? Mm, I, I, I don't love it. So it's just but it doesn't really pair well with this engine. It's quite laggy at times, and being a dual clutch, it should be quick to rifle back through gears, but it just really isn't. So I'll give you an example of what I mean. I'll just put the foot down now. Nothing, nothing, everything. It's like a huge delay before it does everything. So I don't know, it, it just doesn't really feel good with this three cylinder turbocharged petrol engine. I would have loved to just see a normal torque converter mated to this engine. Inherently three cylinder, especially when it is turbocharged, just needs a little bit of get up and go. And when it's mated to this dual clutch, it's just really laggy sometimes. But how does that feel once you actually get stuck into it? Let's give it a little punch here. Look, once it's moving, it's actually okay. It pushes you back into the seat nicely. Three cylinder engines have this inherent rumble to them and this has that. It sounds really cool when you get up it. So from that point of view, it's good. It's just low speed stuff. It, it just really isn't amazing. And then in that eco mode, it is just so dull and lifeless. Kia claims a combined fuel economy of 5.4 litres per 100 kilometres. Let's have a little sticky beak here. We're averaging 6.6, .6, which is not too bad. When you consider, I guess, this being an SUV, that fuel economy is actually not that terrible. We've done a mix of city driving and also a little bit of highway driving as well. The other part of the package that helps save fuel is a stop-start system. I'll show you how that works. So you pull up comes up with a little symbol saying stop start. Now inherently a three cylinder engine is slightly out of balance and you can feel that when it switches off because when it kills fuel, it sort of has a little shimmy before it shuts down. So not the end of the world, but it is something that you do notice every now and then. Let's talk drive modes. So yes, you have the eco mode that it defaults to. You have a normal mode and you also have a sport mode. So in the sport mode, the steering becomes heavier the throttle response becomes sharper as well. And if I get stuck into it now, yeah, I can immediately feel it's it's ready and eager to pick up and move there. It's also holding gears. I can see there that it's holding third for me. And in terms of handling, you don't expect something like this to really handle that well, but it's pretty surprising. It sits nice and flat through corners. The steering has enough feel through it and it communicates nicely. It gives you the impression that it is much sportier than it actually looks. Kia doesn't give us an official zero to 100 kilometer an hour time for the Stonic, but I thought we'd put it up against a stopwatch anyway. So we're just out on a country road now, and you may have noticed my voice is a little bit louder now. There is a lot of road noise in the cabin. You're getting it from the tires, but it also doesn't feel like there's a great deal of insulation. So it's coming in through the sides as cars go past. Yes, this is a coarse chip country road, but it would have been nice to see a little bit more noise insulation here because it is quite droney inside the cabin. 
Let's talk about rides. So Kia has done an Australian ride and handling tune for the Stonic. Now generally what they do, and I noticed this with the Serato GT line as well, they tune it to be sporty for some reason. So it is still comfortable, but it's on the firmer side of comfortable. And that means you'll notice as you're going through the city, uh, potholes, cobblestones, speed humps, that can be a little harsh, especially in comparison to something like Yaris Cross, which is really nice and smooth and softly tuned. This is on the sportier side. So keep that in mind. And like I always say, 24 hour test drive, because if you find this is too firm, you're probably going to want to step back through the range so you're not in a GT line. What about visibility? Um, it shares a platform with the Rio, which means visibility is actually pretty good. I can see down the front of the car. Rearward visibility is not too bad. The window, it's kind of like a narrow envelope, but it's, it's not terrible. And the wing mirrors are big enough to see down the side of the car. It's just disappointing that there's no blind spot on it to there. Okay, so Kia Stonic, what do we think? Um, I don't know, I thought I was really going to enjoy this car, but I came away a little underwhelmed. So the engine and gearbox combination, I just don't know that they gel all that well together. And it's also missing a couple of basic features like no blind spot monitoring. There's no radar cruise control, which is available in some of the competitors in this segment. And I think that it just feels a little underdone inside as well. But if you put all those things to the side, Kia is currently doing drive away pricing in Australia and it makes it fairly competitive in comparison to its peers. It's incredibly fuel efficient and I guess sporty in the sense that if you get up it, you can actually have a little bit of fun with it with that slightly firmer ride. So let me know what you think in the comments section below. I think I've put care up on a pedestal with cars like Sorento and Carnival, and that's possibly why I feel a little sort of underwhelmed with this, but really keen to get your feedback. Have you bought one? What's it like? Is the engine fun to live with? Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Now, if you did enjoy this video, make sure you share it and hit the like button. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to hit subscribe and also the bell icon. But until next time, take it easy.